What we're looking for here, look at where my foot is in relation to my hip. It's back behind the hip. I'm getting these springy contacts with the foot behind the hip. What happens in that position? You guys could just start body weight. You don't need weights. Put your foot up on a bench, get your foot directly underneath your hip, and then kind of just move back. Slight bend in the knee the whole time, and I'm just playing around with the different angles. I can even go side to side, front to back. Then once you get good at that, you can start to handle some weights and just go with some low jumps. And in a second, I'm gonna show you the progression of that. First, you gotta understand that we gotta build this spring in the Achilles. So when we look at Achilles injuries, it's always under rapid loading. So people try to build all this slow strength. In rehab, that's okay, but we gotta get the Achilles under rapid loading and get it nice and elastic. It's gotta be able to store and release elastic energy rapidly, not slow. So it's less about muscular strength. All right, now what's the position that Achilles tears happen in? They happen in this position most of the time. So I'm catching, boom, right? I'm coming in here, little trigger step, boom. A lot of these situations, I'm backpedaling and I plant to go forward. All of those have one thing in common. The foot is back behind the hip. Now, don't get me wrong, that's not a bad thing as long as we're prepared for it. But a lot of the exercises that people do to prepare the Achilles is slow and it's foot underneath the hip. We gotta get the foot behind the hip and we gotta get it used to these spring forces, all right? So I can mess around with that. I can go higher repetition. It's kind of a low level drill. I could go all the way up to 45 seconds, even up to one minute. Then I can grab some weights. I could do the same thing. And then once I'm feeling good and I'm feeling springy and I got no pain, of course, in the Achilles, I can progress it by adding a little bit of a drop to it. So now I can drop straight down, bounce back, and then bounce back on. So it's contact one, it's contact two, and I'm springing back up, all right? So boom, 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 boom. I'm getting some good rapid loading in these highly specific positions that are typically at risk positions. If I get really good there, I could hold weights. And then if I get really good there, then I can just send it back and skip that first contact. So I could just go straight back to this position. I would probably start on a lower box and gradually move up the box. I don't know if I would want you guys starting on a box this high, but essentially you'd be here, springing back up, springing back up, all right? That foot is behind the hip and it's rapidly storing and releasing that elastic energy. Now, as you get into the more intense drills, you're probably gonna take the rep duration down a little bit. So that might be, you know, 20 to 30 seconds worth of work compared to when you first started and it was these, you know, really simple low level hops. That could be 45 seconds. That could be all the way up to a minute. Now, one more key point before I let you guys go, you gotta pay attention to the angles, right? Look at the angles of the ankle. A lot of people think that it's all about range of motion, it's all about dorsiflexion. Well, if that's the case, and I'm pushing for maximal dorsiflexion, and I don't have any bit of stiffness, stiffness in a good way. We're not talking about tissue stiffness, we're talking about the ankle stiffness at ground contact, meaning I can hit and not deform, right? That's where the Achilles injuries happen, is if I was back in this position, and I let the heel drop, now I'm in trouble. But if I can rapidly load here and keep a relatively stiff foot, meaning keep a strong, stable foot here, now my Achilles isn't undergoing excessive lengthening. So when you're doing these drills, you wanna film yourself from the side and you wanna make sure that you're keeping that relatively stiff foot. So you are gonna have a little bit of give, right? When that foot hits, you're gonna have a little bit of give, but what you don't wanna see is that heel collapsing down to the floor or even close to the floor. If you're doing it in this position right here where your heel is touching the floor, we're probably only increasing the risk of injury because now our nervous system is getting used to that position. And every time you go do it in sports, that might be your default pattern. So I wanna be able to get in that position and keep that stiff, springy foot. And most importantly, as always, we don't prevent fast injuries by training slow. We could build a base, we could do some stuff with slow strength training, that's great. That's always gonna be a part of our injury reduction programs, but at the end of the day, the way that you really prepare for fast loading is fast loading. Let's get it.